tweets live, so just so everyone's aware. Someone make the tweet, though, that says that Razzle finally got here, and we were finally able to start. Can someone do that for me? Alright, cool. I think we have it on the official channel, so I'll just retweet that. Okay, perfect. We're, we're live. <laughs> we're live. We made it. Are we actually on episode 43? I think so. We actually made it to episode 43. That's wow, we're almost up to 50. That's depressing. That's when absurd. Start the next season. That's, <laughs> that's absurd. We've done 43 episodes of this. Thank you guys so much for sitting through 42 of them. I promise this one will be good. I'm joined on the uh, the panel with Kelsey Bold. Moser. Bold. <laughs> The score, uh, Drexen Esports Heaven, Razzleplasm. Raz, how do you ever want me to introduce you? Do you want me to just say, like, the teams that you work for or anything like that? Uh, just say analyst for the Chiefs, I suppose. Analyst for the Oceanic team, the Chiefs. The best the Oceanic L team. <laughs> and the LSPL junkie. And the LSPL <laughs> junkie. I'm Froskin, I'm your host, and we have a very special episode of China Talk. Now, what makes this episode so special? Well, you will find out later, but first... We're going to talk about rosters. So um, obviously we're in the off season. We just had our MSI episode. Uh, I believe Emily subbed in for me, which thank you. She does a fantastic job every single time. Kelsey, I had your camera perfect. Stop messing with it. Yeah. Continuing. <laughs> we have the MSI victory of EDG, and now we're in this off season period where the roster rumors are running crazy. Now the most important thing to recognize with Chinese roster rumors is that they're never true. They're almost never true. You'll hear a ton of crazy <coughs> stuff. Nothing will ever be confirmed until the very last second. But we're going to talk about what we know for sure has been confirmed, what we think is going to be confirmed, and then what we wish would happen. Is everyone cool with that? Oh, we're also going to have a ninja section. Because everyone apparently wants to talk about ninja, finally. Even though we've mm -hmm. been talking about him for the last, you know, 42 episodes of the and show. And I thought the most hype move is going to be Dada. Uh, such <laughs> Sadness. Let's actually open this up. Let's talk about Ninja because I feel like that's kind of where our core, like, North, uh, I want to say Northwestern, Western audience, like, actually cares now. It's because he's going to be the mid laner for uh, Team Dragon Knights, which Alex Ish boosted into the LCS. It's, I'm kidding. Alex Ish subbed for them. They got up into the LCS. Um, they've looked really good in the Challenger scene. I know that I follow the North American Challenger scene. I don't know if you guys follow them. Anything? She follows the North American Challenger scene more than the North American LCS. This is actually accurate. <laughs> yeah, it is actually. <laughs> you want to know about Challenger players? I can tell you some shit about Challenger players. You want to know about the LCS, TSM? I don't know who they are. <laughs> I follow Challenge at North American Challenger, not collegiate though. I, I don't go... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been gone this, this far down the rung. <laughs> Um, uh. So he's going to be the starting mid laner for Team Dragon Knights. Team Dragon Knights are considered kind of the top tier challenger team. Um, they're very dominant. They're very oppressive in their style. Uh, Seraph is like a, a really carry top oriented playstyle. So when I heard that Ninja was going to be their mid laner, um, before it was, I can never say his, the mid laner's name correctly. I'm just going to shorten it to Kyle. But he was a Jace main is what he was really well known for. But I actually think that Ninja is going to work well in the dynamic of Team Dragon Knights because he's more of a controlled mage kiting style. Like, it's funny too because Ninja's also really well known for his Jace play. But like, anything that can allow um, Emperor and Seraph to be hard carries and Ninja just kind of like sit and be serviceable and stable. Because I don't think we'll ever say something like, oh, Ninja's amazing, his 1v1 talent's absurd, he's, he's super great. We'll say he's serviceable. He's safe. You can just leave him in the mid lane. That's not... That's not how Rookie felt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who is Ninja? Um, uh, mid laner, sorry for Prime Optimus. From no Gion Wu. Oh, good job. Yeah. Okay, so he came over and he replaced Sukum. So originally when uh, Ninja came to the LPL, it was kind of a controversial move because everyone thought that Sukum was the better mid laner. I don't think that's arguable. Nope, it was, he was definitely yeah. the better mid laner. Yep. Um, but they wanted jungle synergy between the mid and jungle because they wanted to bring over a Korean jungler. Good old OB. Yep, yeah. old B. Axine. Axine. And then it was old B. Oh, Old B was the second one, and he only played exactly. with them for like a single tournament, and then he was sent to WE Future. And <laughs> Mickey God. Heard from we again. Had, we had Khan, Old B, Axine, Mickey God, and Ninja. Yes, those were the five Koreans on rotation for World Elite before they got Spirit. Well, World Lead Academy had Khan and Mickey God. Mm -hmm. And then Axine and Ninja were on World Elite. Yes. Now, 
how was Ninja's performance? Because obviously he played up until I am, which right before I am, he got subbed out and everyone saw Shie. I do want to clarify that Ninja hasn't actually been purchased by the Dragon Knights. He's technically on loan. So, what? Yeah, he's on loan for the summer only from WE. Rent to Korean. Yeah, rent to <laughs> yeah, Korean. So <laughs> like the Chinese now, like have purchased all the Koreans, and they're set setting up a rent to Korean business. Yeah. I was so, wondering how they can afford Ninja because they're yeah. That's what I was wondering too. But and they end up renting. <laughs> it wouldn't be as funny if it wasn't true. <laughs> So does this mean that they're just doing Shisa happening? with Kyle? Uh, I don't know what what the I don't know anything about Challenger. All I know is that WE posted that he was on loan, and Ninja confirmed it on his Facebook. So okay, so they're renting Ninja. Fresh, effectively, yes. Out of all of the Koreans, you could have rented. I mean, I don't know. Well, he was probably the cheapest per week fee. Yeah. I think it's probably that they have connections, is what I would assume, just because he's mm. still going to be absurdly expensive because it is war to weed. Um, Isn't WE also mentioned? <laughs> Sponsored by, team, by MSI? Huh? I do not know. Ooh, that could be, I don't know. I, knew that, I do know that there's connections. But, uh, okay. As people who have watched Ninja for his split in China and like his most like his highest level of competitive experience, obviously not his time on Prime Optimus, mm -hmm. what did we think about him? Mm, yeah, I was I, well, I was a pretty huge Sukum fan, so I thought that downgrade was pretty noticeable. Um, what, what was but the thing is, the thing, about him? pretty much everything. I mean, he was just kind of relic. I mean, they they switched him out for the whole synergy thing, but it, like it didn't even really matter because. Relative to the other mid and jungle synergy, it was not really that great. I mean, I don't know. I didn't find anything good against about Ninja except for his play on a, a couple of champions. And even that didn't happen until really late into the split. Like, Ninja's peak performance was actually right before he got replaced at IEM. Mm -hmm. And that's when, I, that's when it started getting confusing because they spent so many weeks building him up when everybody was disappointing and, disappointed in his performance. And then he was where people saw him play like a few casting games and actually carry a couple WE games. And they're like, okay... Well, I guess maybe he's decent, and then all of a sudden we got the news about GA. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know. It, it really depends on his performance relative to the majority of the LPL splitter at the very end as to where he stands now. I think, I think another the... issue is his champion pool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. His champion pool is the biggest thing. I think it literally revolves around Ezreal, Jace, Kasdan, and Nibia. Yeah. He was. He played some Cassiopeia games actually too. So, mm. I yep. think his Cho champion. Gath. Yeah, Chogath. I think his yeah. champion pool was, was less growing. was less relevant when they made the switch to Shia, but I think it's more relevant now. So. And it's, yep. You mean in terms of like coming back into meta and his yeah things actually being power fix? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The biggest thing that he needed as like that we re like. If he needed a style, a specific style that really, honestly, that he survived solely around sustained laners is what I realized. Because he makes mistakes. He does. In the lane. And so when he played Cho'Gath, when he played Anivia, it was a real, it was a lot safer in the lane. And generally in teamfights, he's a lot more... I think he's a, he's a lot better in teamfights than he is in laning. And Anivia, like, those picks really work for him. So, I, like, he had, he had a style, and he played it well, near the like near the end of the like, right up to MS, uh, MSI, up to IEM, he was playing really well with that style. I think he was playing with like, like, mm, although he was playing against like Gamti, and who else? Snake was one game, was one set. Well, they played against Vici. They played against Invictus Gaming. Like mm -hmm. towards yeah. the end, they actually played some pretty strong teams, yeah. and he did fairly well in lane against Rookie. Oh, so. something that needs to be clarified. Ninja was not benched. He requested to step down when he yeah. was replaced. So the big thing with World Elite is because they were losing so much, obviously the players were having confidence issues, and uh, they had like a revolving door for their mid lane and their support position, where I guess like Ninja, Yushe, um, Conan, people like this were saying, you know, I don't want to play anymore, I want to retire, please just bench me, please put the other yeah. guy in. So it shouldn't be like, oh, the benched mid laner of World Elite is now coming over and playing in North America. No, he chose to step down 
I don't know if that says that maybe he has confidence issues um, or anything like that, and that might, I don't know. I mean, if you don't have confidence issues in China, especially in World Elite, oh yeah, uh, you're gonna get flamed by like the entire population of that country, <laughs> and like it, you're gonna get flamed by a lot of people, a lot. And so, if we like, let's say, if we talk about the whole issue in NA when with Nian Tanso, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, look, a lot of people are flaming him. He has a lot of massive confidence issues." Well, guess what? Think about that times 100 for World Elite players, I suppose. It's like if you perform, perform poorly, the fans react poorly. So now here comes the question. How will Ninja perform in the LCS? And obviously I can't answer this because I don't know anything about the LCS. It's mm -hmm. also really hard to answer just because Ninja seems to lack identity as to like what exactly style of player he is, uh, I feel. I mean, he started leveling up significantly, but he leveled up at about the same time Spirit did, too. So you have to take that into consideration. Like, he had a really strong jungler. Yeah. Um, yep. So, and then Ninja, I think you can notice a difference in Spirit's play, even like in the span of one week. He just got significantly better between like week five and six. So, um, and then that was about the time when Ninja started going off as well. So, like, yeah, he would have these games where he went 11-0 on like Hasidin or Ezreal or where he could play Anivia really well. Um, but I think the one thing that Ninja had over, like, I would say in general that I think Ninja and Shia are of similar level, so everyone who is impressed by Shia at IEM, I think Shia overperformed at IEM, um, but I think that they have very different styles in champion pools, but overall are similar in level. Ninja's gonna like do team fights and play control mages a little bit better, and then Shia is gonna like just 1v1 better. Mm. Okay. Yep. That's a fair assessment, yeah. Are we good talking about Ninja? Nothing else oh, we, wanted to cover with him. we ain't done with him. Not really. I, I mean, yeah. I just I don't know. I just I don't know. I've never been really a big fan until the very end, and the whole the whole logic behind W bringing him bringing him in was like so shitty because I think Sukim and Ruo were a better pair, and I don't know. It was only in, it was only at the very end that he looked really good, but it's also hard for me to sympathize with his improvement just because he did have like pretty much what we unanimously agreed at the time was the best jungler in the world. So. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say that with Team Dragon Knights, um, they won't have the time to build up synergy. But Kez is a safe jungler. He's going to be able to hopefully ward up around for Ninja, so maybe that'll keep him safe. And Even if yeah. he ward for Ninja, I just don't see Ninja putting himself in a situation where he's going to, like, I don't think he's ever going to be bloodthirsty and try to murder his lane. I don't consider him, like, a mm. 1v1. He's probably just going to yeah. sit back and just, like, play it safe and farm. And it's just up to Seraph and uh, Emperor to carry. Yeah, and that's fair. Like, I don't think he's going to have problems unless if he goes up against, him, like, uh, C9 or TSM with their strong mid laners, like Bjergsen and Incarnation, I suppose. See, I was uh, like, Yasui yeah. and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I think he will look, I think he will look good in NA, mm -hmm. especially, I mean, especially, like, if he, if he does play as well as... He did in China, but I mean, he's going from Spirit to Kez, so I mean that's yeah. a fucking drastic drop off. And it's, and I'm sorry, true, I'm sorry. It just, it just makes true. it really hard to be a ninja apologist, you know. Yeah. And you did, and Raz did mention like he has a very, I feel he has a very specific play style. So getting like, he is kind of a serviceable guy who will let the sidelines carry, but I still feel like getting that balance of like where, how exact, like what champions to make him comfortable on, and all this other stuff is like a bit unique. So, um, Can yeah. Can someone tell Kibo that he needs to message one of you, and you need to relay the message to me? He keeps messaging me on Skype, and I literally can't check my Skype. So I pull away from the scene; it's gonna change yeah. everything. And he's got, like, we're like 10 messages deep. I'm like, Kibo, I'm sorry. I have no idea what you want. Do you need a shower? Do we need to... <laughs> what can I get you? <laughs> so, if one of you could, like, relay that to me. Preferably Kelsey, because she's easier. But Anyway, that's the Ninja story. If you guys need to know anything else about Ninja, if you have any questions about Ninja, we can answer them. But part of the problem is, is that we don't really know how Ninja's going to perform. Like we said, I didn't really have any sort of style that like catered to him or anything like that. He had the best jungler in the world jungling for him when he started to, to kind of upturn. I think his best performance on his best champion was actually Ezreal, although he did get a pentakill on Jace last year. Yeah. There you go. That's all you need to know about Ninja. Let's move on to other roster changes. So I think it's a request to increase your mic volume. 
I'll work on that. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Right. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Dun. Let's talk about what are the roster changes that we know for sure are going through. All right, Kelsey. It's your job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so the ones that we know for sure, there are six teams that have announced their lineups. Here, I have them done. Um, Edward Gaming announced theirs officially, Snake announced theirs officially, um, VG Gaming announced theirs, King announced theirs, um, RNG announced theirs, Chaogu announced theirs, and UP announced theirs. Okay, let's first start with King, RNG, and the other team that somehow got eloped into this. You Unlimited did, potential! <laughs> you did a, uh, I always want to call them limitless, I don't know. You did a little video where you discussed what happened. So Star Home Royal Club got relegated. What did they do then, Kelsey? So, Star Home Royal Club got relegated. What they did next was they were like, the fans came and visited them, and they were like, oh my gosh, we feel motivated now, or at least this is what they said on their way back. Um, so we must purchase our way back into LPL. So just, just to clarify. They, they didn't just buy one team, though. <laughs> they didn't buy Gamgee, well... According to the narrative, they didn't okay. buy GavT spot. They bought VG Gaming potential spot, which which VG Gaming had to sell that anyway because they're not allowed to own it, right? Mm -hmm. So they bought VG Gaming potential spot, but then VG Gaming potential's team supposedly got purchased by another owner. Okay, okay. Uh, Unlimited potential. Got it. Is the new name. And they bought Gamgee Spot, okay? So if you're following me here. Okay, so Starhorn Rail Club decides that they actually want to care now. They run and they buy Vici P, P Spot, because obviously Vici can't own two different teams. Vici P's roster then buys Gamgee Spot. Why does yes. Gamgee have to sell their spot? Because they suck. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that's clarified. Well, the, the thing that happens is that half... Is that the like, official reasoning? The, Was the that on the Weibo? Did you translate that? Because you may want to look at that translation. <laughs> Continuing, I don't think Vici's individual players suck. I just think putting all like a bunch of five-year-olds who have mechanical talent on a single roster is going to result in Sick pretty much. Oh very God. few wins. Um, <laughs> Are you referring to Gamtee's roster? Because it was a very yeah. young roster, yes. yes. Oh, I thought you were young. talking about unlimited potential. Okay, no, no, no. No, 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 no. no yeah. Um, okay. So, I, I jokingly call them five-year-olds, but they're all very young. Yeah. And um, so, half of those players get purchased by King, and half of those players get purchased by Starhorn, by the Royal Club brand. Which they is? now have two teams, okay? They have their LPL team, Royal Never Give Up. I can't make this up. Um, and RNG. RNG is the Starhorn <laughs> Royal Club. At um, RNG, well, for all you people out there. <laughs> 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 And Starhorn Row Club is their LSPL team now. So the ha so half of those players go to Royal Club and half of those players go to King. Okay, so effectively what happened is the 12 teams, so we had after the LPL promotions, we had the 12 teams that are set in stone. VGP... Okay, I'm not done yet, okay. Then King and Starhorn and then King and Royal never got give up are like, guys, let's switch our teams. This is totally not suspicious, even remotely. Okay, we're, we're just going to trade teams amicably here. We're going to put Cola, Insect, Corn, Name, and Zero on King, and we're going to put some Gamtee guys and some King guys on Royal Never Give Up. It has nothing to do with the fact that King has 50 circuit points for the regional tournament, and Royal Never Give Up doesn't, I think, has 10. <laughs> they ended up getting like 10 or something. So uh, it has nothing to do with the circuit point difference, which, by the way, it's not even like significant because like the winner of the summer split gets 450 and EDG already has 300 or whatever. But it's still, it has nothing to do with the circuit points. No one cares. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Star Wars <laughs> Club is effectively now king. Yes. And RNG, Royal Never Give Up, which was the original team that Royal Club bought is now Gamti slash King. Yes. Yep. And the of... GP, yeah. the actual team that they bought. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is now unlimited potential. Just think of this. And as... who's on that roster? The unlimited potential? Yeah. Uh Lung, Aini, Zhao Yang, who I have no idea who that is, Yeah, it's same. A, it's not Apollo. 
You know what's bad with that LSPL expert has no idea who the fuck is on that team. It's not Apollo <laughs> or Shuan because Shuan Shuan got purchased by VG Gaming, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, he stayed with VG Gaming. And um Apollo name changed. Apollo too. name changed and he's still a sub on the roster. But they have Zhao, Zhao Yang, uh Sketch and Hunt. Everyone else is the same as the team. It's just the mid laner. Mm. And I, I remember there was like Apollo's always been that player who you knew that like if they ever got anywhere he was probably gonna get replaced. <laughs> and it's a, it's such yeah. a hard thing to say. Because I mean they had always... like their eighty carry sub playing mid for them and in, in the uh, finals, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he he just had so many problems. Like there were times where he just like died solo mid for no reason. You're like questioning why would he do that? He you have like a leech, you're going even, but he does it, and you're like okay, well. Uh. <laughs> You'll get your moment, Raz. We get to talk there's about even, all the new little LSPL teams. And there's even know. an interview. I just want to say there's even an interview Hart had um, in January when he was like get, just getting like comfortable with the team, I guess. And he was just like talking about like one thing like they had to work with was a, like getting co Apollo a com Apollo comfortable. And it's like Apollo okay, well, was pretty bad. Yeah. Okay, so we have the confirmed rosters. We now understand what's happening with Starhorn Royal Club. We've got let's let's start with Snake because um, I think Snake was kind of like the breakout team that lots of people started to like. Their roster has changed. They now have a new mid laner. All right. Yes. And I you. think they are going to rotate their eighty carries. So mm -hmm. they have a new mid laner and they're rotating the eighty carries. So the two eighty carries are now going to be Crystal and Martin. Mm -hmm. Crystal, I believe, is being rotated uh, because he's injured. His hand, I believe, or his wrist is injured. I think <coughs> also just because, like, Martin is a very different kind of AD carry. Plays very different champions. Other stuff. Plays it, plays it better. Team <laughs> Honestly, from what he yeah, from and what he's played. And one v one AD carry. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, not just that, but he has like he plays like Sivir and Jinx, which I mean, Crystal didn't. So yeah, team fighting ADC versus one v one ADC. You got the Draven player. And the Callisto uh, I mean, player, I guess and a lot of people Sabir think and Jinx player. I guess a lot of people think Crystal of Crystal is a team fighting AD carry because he oh. plays a bunch of hyper carries. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. You, have, you can't. That doesn't really. I mean, count. Snake is a team fighting team, so yes. Yeah. It's just like two different kinds of team fighting. One, one literally trying to help the team. The other one trying to just the team is engulfed around, <laughs> surrounding him, and that's pretty yeah. much. Crystal. Martin was so much more self sufficient in the time yeah. I've seen him play. So. Mm -hmm. Their mid laner, though, guys. is this guy named Yu. Now, that may sound familiar because it's EDG's old mid laner before Pawn replaced him. So what I'm actually curious about is it was said last split that Pawn was going to take the first four weeks off of, of LPL to go back and recover and that Yu would be subbing for the team. And so I was really curious, if, because of Easy Hoon and Faker's performance at MSI, if maybe EDG would be inspired to do a... You pawn Easy Hoon Faker style of like subbing out your mid laners, but now that you was on Snake, which I think is an excellent trade because I think he's pretty much an upgrade to Baka as well as very similar in playstyle in every single position. Yeah. Yep. Way bigger champion pool too. Mm -hmm. We love you. How much do we love you? A lot. I've always thought he was really good. Like the thing, the thing with you is people people saw exactly the role that he was forced to play on EDG. And then as as time progressed, people saw that he was able to open up and play other things like assassin style play very well too. So he's really flexible and moldable to what the team needs. So if they want him to fulfill whatever Baka was doing, he can do that and probably better. But also he won't be completely screwed if certain champions are banned out like Baka was. And I think that opening up pick and bans for Snake is going to make them a lot stronger because as soon as people started figuring out Snake in the draft phase, right. that's when it started going all downhill for them. It's mm -hmm. not like. Zareth has to be banned every game against them now. Like, yeah. he'll have yeah. things to do if his best champion is banned. Um, and he can probably, like, he can play Ziggs, and that was like, Bak that was probably, I would say that was Baka's second best champion because that's what he played a lot in LSPL. So, yeah. I mean, he might be able, like, Zareth is the only one I can think of that maybe he can't play because he hasn't shown it. Maybe he can't play Azir because he hasn't shown it, but. And you, you seems to be capable of learning stuff. So. Right, and the, and I mean, like, it's not 
I mean, we say this, but it's not like Baka was able to adapt to new champion picks either. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it is just a straight up upgrade, I feel. And you have started getting higher in the ladder. Well, so that just means that he's just been honing his like mechanical skills. So, yep. just the just added me measurements there. Okay, so that's Snake. So oh, yeah, no. and, and I mean, no, I was just gonna add that. I mean, he does have a, like if Snake's a team fighting team, then he has a lot of team fighting experience because the way you oh, played yeah. on EDG was very very safe up until team fights, and he was miraculous at those. So his it's like it's such a fighting. good fit. Yeah, his team fitting is so good. Like, yeah. So what do we think about Snake with Martin and you and like the context of the top LPL teams? Because obviously they finished very well, not only in the playoffs, but also in the, uh, the regular season. I mean, I guess I the want playoffs to was kind of like a regular I want, I want, season. I want to see if the addition of you and Martin and their increased champion pools mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, with the um, addition of... Ella improving so much over the course of the split will open up Flandre to play more stuff he's more comfortable with. Like, instead of being relegated to tank-style stuff, like, I want to see if he'll be able to play how he did in LSPL, and I feel like the dynamic of the team might change a little bit, but they'll still kind of have their signature team, uh, team fight style. Uh, mm -hmm. I do think it's just an overall upgrade, though. Like, I can't really find anything that's worse than it was off uh, from spring. What these moves tell me is that Snake recognizes what their problem was last split, which is that they were very dependent on one very specific style, and they're looking for ways to diversify their gameplay. So, mm -hmm. that's like probably the smartest response to a problem in an off-season roster move I've ever seen a Chinese team make. So, so let's go the other way. Let's go... <laughs> Let's go a very typical response. Let's go to Vici Gaming. So Vici Gaming has decided instead of to change any of their pieces that they're just going to add a bunch of pieces. And I believe right. they're going to be doing a rotating roster. So they've got what? Two mid laners, two top laners, two ADCs. Oh, someone help me. That's, yeah. I don't know. Do we know That's... anything A about these players? Because I looked at those names and I didn't recognize them. I didn't what recognize any about? of them. Oh. Um, I, oh, okay. Anyone. I know. I can tell you who a lot of them are, actually. Yeah. Thank God. Um, so the top lane sub, Debuji or whatever, uh, sorry, I'm messing up his name, I don't have it written down, um, but his, he's a popular streamer, and he's best known for his Aurelia. So, I have no idea what they're going <laughs> to do with that. Uh, he mm -hmm. plays like Rumble and Aurelia, and Carrie's already a good is, Rumble uh, player. Yeah. If this is so, just a case of that they're just going to have him on the bench and he'll just be streaming for them and make revenue? Yeah, I mean, that's what it seems like to me, because okay. he is pretty popular. Like, so that's what, because that's what File Ollie does for EDG. So, yep. um, mm. then we have... Dandy. <laughs> the and next one is... The, well, yeah, Dandy. And then the next one we had, the, the mid lane sub is, I forget what his name is. It's Pung. P P Pung, right? Um, Pung, yeah. Yeah, Pung. And he's going to be, he played for like a team that I don't think is even in TGA called GW. Um, and he, he apparently was pretty high on challenger though, on the challenger ladder though, but he's a mid lane sub. So I don't really know much about his champion pool or his play style. That's, but I'm guessing that they're going to try him out as a replacement for Hatong. Um, and then the ICs. They have Shwen, who I, we already mentioned earlier, played like was the mid lane sub for Vichy Gaming, and he actually ended up playing mid for them in their finals yeah. in LSPL. And he's also been Jordan playing. He's, he's always been in and out for throughout the regular season as well. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So he was actually subbing for mid lane for them, but I guess his main role is AD carry. So they're mm -hmm. gonna try him out. And they they had another one. Who, oh, uh, endless from right, right, right. This is on top of Vasily. Yeah, so they had two. So I'm guessing like they're definitely like looking at the eighty carry problem first, but so if only they avoided that the start of spring. <laughs> yeah. So what do we think about Vici's roster? I. It's a. Uh, I don't know. I don't like it. I mean, I feel like. I don't really think they're going to rotate, honestly. The only ones I can see rotating is AD Carry, yeah. just because is they identify as an issue. any need to adjust? I mean, maybe mid. I mean, I think mid needs to be fixed. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think mid is the most glaring problem with that roster. Um, I feel like Vici Gaming is identifying that 
they have weak players in their lanes and they're trying to get upgrades, but they probably couldn't sign like the players they wanted or something, and so they yeah. just like grabbed a bunch of players. What seems like, ridiculous to we'll me give you about a shot. that statement is the fact that Vici have so much money. They're a very wealthy organization. I mean, obviously, the Dota mm -hmm. team is doing very well. Uh, their league team did great for their initial split. So the fact that they just wouldn't be able to sign anyone is like super curious to well, me, especially because all those maybe, rumors about them trying out Cool and things like that. Well, yeah, I mean, like they, there were rumors about Cool, so that's the one wrench in the plans. But maybe they have a tighter law budget for the summer or something. So I don't know, like what the issue is, but that team, I think <laughs> the biggest issue is probably where they're looking. I don't. I know teams, generally, when they come in, like, L LPL teams, when they look into the L LSPL, they probably don't look in the right directions or really even trust in certain players, for instance. Um, I know that... Oh, we're probably going to talk about it anyways. Chao Gu's acquisition of Cherish. That was probably something they probably... Like, that's something they should have won for. Yeah. But. And I'm pretty sure Cherish is going to sit on the bench anyway because <laughs> he's not Korean. Oh, right. So... Um, but the... God the, bless Hero. God bless Hero. Uh, is, is he managing? He's the coach for Chowgu. Really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hero's back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hero, the Congratulations. manager and coach for World Elite when they decided w, to bring yeah. over uh, He was just the coach, but yes. He was He's the guy who benched Ruo and... He's, and the, he's the guy that made everybody lose faith in Korean acquisition <laughs> China. <laughs> He's yeah. like the OG of, the, of such actions. Yeah. Let's I just mean, start farming them prime off this we had We had <laughs> WE that like got completely tanked versus Starhorn Road Club that made second at World's Finals. So, I mean, yeah. we had, a, we had a, a wide range there. Um, but, so he's he's back. Ladies, excellent. But he was the one, he, because the reason why he's back is because he had Swift, right? He grabbed Swift and said, if you want to sign Swift, you have to take me, pretty much. That's not shady. No. Um, <laughs> so, so it's like, please oh, yeah. help me! <laughs> <laughs> and he was just standing by him with like, his hands on his shoulders like, yes. I feel like Swift and Spirit are going to be really good friends. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, I mean, I don't think, I know Raz doesn't really like Chogu's. I think Chogu's bottom lane is fine, actually. Like... I mean, yeah, okay. I think their bottom lane is like okay, solid. Okay, who? Right here. Raz, tell us, who is this new and interesting team joining the LPL? Will they be any good? Who is on their roster? Now we know who's okay. coaching them, so. Yeah. Alright, so this team has TNT and TCT. Uh, more is. Which one is more? I hate their names so TCT. much. TCT! TCT is more. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah go, like, go top, jungle, mid, ADC support. <sighs> Wow, okay. LCS order gear. <laughs> Alright, fine. Um, okay, so they're... Damn it, it's V, right? Yeah. Okay, it's V for top lane. The jungler is Swift. Their mid laner is... I hate this. Doing B? Doing B? I'm B, just yeah. Doing B. Uh, their AD carry is TNT, and their support is TCT, who you might know as more from LMQ. Uh, yep. They're a team that is pretty much, I feel like they're just so based on mechanical outplay. That's just their, they've somehow embraced the idea Well, obviously of it got them outplay. into the LPL, so it can't be that bad. Yeah, no, it is strictly mechanics and the best, the best like, matchup. I mean, I haven't watched many of their games because I don't really watch LSPL, but when I was watching Demacia Cup, like, mm -hmm. Snake is a team that obviously is good at team fighting, but has no star players, and you could, like, tell the disparity, like, super huge in that, in that game. But that's why uh, in the quarterfinals, QG was able to beat Snake, like, pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't yeah. the meta favor them right now because it is so team fight oriented? Oh, no. They're... No, 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 no. They're about individual no, play, Snake. not about team fight. She's oh, asking snake? about Snake. Oh, the Snake? Oh, snake. No, oh. I'm asking about... Uh, I can never no. say their name. Sorry, if you're talking about QG, right. no, I don't think so. I think QG relies on outlating their opponents. Outlating? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Outlating, and at the same time, Swift was so... Dan he was basically... Yeah, Swift is really good. Spirit. He was basically Spirit. Like, you give him Nidalee, he will just crush on his own. And he doesn't... Like, I don't know. Like, that champ... You, it's basically Cinder Hulk City right now. It, it's yeah. not... So yeah. where do where do you see them lining up 
especially in the current meta, 5.9? Uh, his last place of safe... I'm going to go last place. You put Snake in last place last time, and we saw how that happened. I understand that, that, but that was before... Wait, was it before the acquisition of Beast and Ella? I'm going to say it was. No, it was after. No, it was after? I still didn't know who those guys were, so... <laughs> like, with that being said, take my words with... No, 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 you know what? Take my words for what it is. With Be Beast and Ella, I looked at those... I, I basically th looked at them as B-tier Koreans, and I was like, I don't trust it. That's an X-factor. They I are one of the few times where... It's actually been impressive to and bring in no name Koreans. Like I mean, maybe not so much for Beast, but for Ella. I yeah. mean, that, usually when that happens, it's like okay, you probably could find better domestic talent. But Snake got pretty lucky in that regard. So I don't really blame anyone for thinking wait that these people that no one's heard of. Oh wait, we're talking about Xiaogu. Just kidding. I want to talk about okay, unlimited wait, potential. What do you think we're talking Xiaogu. about? This guy no, 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 is crazy. No, 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 no. I forgot. I forgot. No, 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 no. I forgot about shotgun. Like, I was like, a straight sugar, he's just like on a high right now, just buzzing everywhere. <laughs> I, had to, I had to think about the teams that existed and realize that Unlimited Potential is still there. How did so, that... Okay. So Unlimited Potential is going to be last, and I think Xiaogu is going to be... Why is Unlimited God. Potential going to be last? Haven't yeah. you learned? Don't you have any faith in Heart and Sketch? King They're and great, Snake but... were the LSPL teams that came in last what year, about and both I of them made playoffs. Aimee in this meta is not going to be looking good. Well, neither, He's... like, okay, all of the jungles, we like, most of the jungles we have in LPL right now are, like, carry-style junglers, right? We have, yeah, like, fucking... True. So so a bunch of these really good junglers that we have sitting around in China are just going to be like, screw this Cinder Hulk meta, my team is too heavy. It's pretty much I might what's happening. To, to be fair with Unlimited Potential, I have no damn clue who that mid laner is. Like, I absolutely do, I have... So that that a result bit of there. potential. Yeah, they're mid new mid laner. Uh, I think it's the same mid laner. Oh no, no, no J J. Oh yeah, yeah we're, we're right. They replace yeah. the mid laner. That's right. Yeah. So we're just talking about this. <laughs> so with the new mid laner, <laughs> he's like amazing. I don't know if he's horrible. I don't know. Like, I'm gonna have to assume that he's a step up. Given Vici gaming there. roster decisions. I mean, outside acquiring Dandy and Mata, which is, like, probably one of the smartest moves ever, right? But, like, not putting them in an environment where they can succeed. The fact that they've had Wayless, they've had, like, SLZ, they've had a bunch of players on their roster that, they, that they've sold to other rosters, and then they've had that team beat them in, like, lower leagues and prevent them from getting into LPL, like, repeatedly. This yeah. isn't something that's just happened once. This has, like, happened repeatedly throughout the team's history. Um, I mean, it just feels like they're not super good at roster decisions. Yeah. So for this split, I would probably put Chagu over Unlimited Potential, just because of that aspect of, like, mechanically outplaying, which you can never, you can never really underplay. Um, but yeah, I would still have them as second last. I want to say that, and I think that's a safe bet. I have no, I have no faith in the LSPL teams after the. I don't know. I think they'll Snake be. Snake literally took. Uh, what? Wait. I think. Yeah, Snake, I understand. Okay, Snake I see what you're getting at. Snake did amazing for the regular Cup. season. And you're just like, I will never. But trust Snake had in such LSPL. a bad playoff. I think too, it's going to come That's down to like exposed. King and Chaogu fighting over eighth places. I think it's gonna, or I guess I should say RNG and Chaogu fighting oh, over right. eighth places. Yeah, I have trouble. I have trouble seeing. Chagu getting into playoffs just because I feel like once teams adapt to their individualistic style of play that they're not going to be able to do well. I yeah. just I just put them because I think a strong jungler like even though this meta is annoying I still think a strong jungler is extremely important and because That's of true. how good Swift is I think like they're going to be either 8th or ninth. Like they're either going to scoot into playoffs or they're going to knock down King. Yeah, the I mean, other it's... issue is that they're coming into a time where a lot of the hybrid rosters have gotten up and going, whereas like Snake mm -hmm. and King came in where yeah, not only that's... Snake was trying to deal with their hybrid roster, but King obviously the all Chinese team. They didn't have to deal with like the hybrid rosters at their their power level. Yeah, that's the one really interesting thing about the split is because usually like LPL teams are extremely, and I don't know if they it's because they spent so much money last off season, but usually LPL teams are extremely reactionary when it comes to roster changes. Like, mm -hmm. no one keeps the same roster split to split, and almost everyone did this time. Like, 
there are very few roster changes, actually. So I think that's going to be something very new and very interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, when you're paying that much for players, you want to hang yeah. on to them. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about OMG. So OMG isn't confirmed but. On, on their Weibo, but it's my understanding that they're staying with GoGoing, Loveland, Cool, UZI, and they're actually going to start Xiong support. I mean, it worked kind of when they were doing their random roster changes, but I really don't trust their ability to hold on to a starting roster throughout the split. So, yeah, I don't know. That and team is a big... And they also s- changed their coaching. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got rid that. of the other guy. I don't know who they replaced him with. I just know that he's not... They probably have, like, no coach now. No, <laughs> um, no they probably... That might not I'm, be a bad thing. I'm pretty sure they have a coach, <laughs> but they... Like the last coach. Yeah, I, it's my understanding that they no longer have the same coach. It's one of these moments that I wish I had, like, confetti just randomly spawning in my hand. <laughs> yeah, they desperately <laughs> need That's a superpower. I want the ability to generate confetti at random times. <laughs> <laughs> I would get hired so often. <laughs> Birthday parties, I'm great. Hey. <laughs> See, I think Xiong, I think Xiong would kind of work with UZI because he's like just the, how aggressive he is. But at the same time, I don't think he has the experience required to lane with someone that he's gonna have to pull out of shitty situations on a regular basis. The strength so. of it is though is that Xiong was all about his laning phase, and that's pretty much where UZI likes to shine. So if you have two yeah. very lane dominant players. I think actually when we know. watched him play as a support, he roamed a lot. So that's why I loved him, by the way. That's yeah. really when he came in with San and uh, like the San Cian bot lane, he was so map centric, like centric. He was like always roaming a bit too much. He was trying, like, maybe he was testing his limits, honestly. And so that he's gonna get picked off, <laughs> like uh, like legit in his first few weeks, he's gonna get like picked off so often because teams are gonna realize this. But I, I liked him uh, for that reason. And it worked out when he was subbing, but... Uh. Not a big data pool to pull from that, though. Yeah, exactly. Like, yep. we can't really tell. And the fact that he was with Sun, Sen, who doesn't really need, like, his handheld or not, and UZI yep. is much more lane-oriented, like, that could be a factor. Um, so, But the thing is, is that if they are looking to give more roam, more jung- potentially more jungle support like that, I would think that would be a good direction for them, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, EDG. Yeah, oh, EDG. Man. They signed Amazing J. This was um, supposed to be Soldier's episode. Amazing J got signed to the best team in China right now. <laughs> it's too bad I can't. <laughs> there was there was there were a lot of rumors about Koro on holding off his contract on resigning. My under my thought on it is is that because he's been with the same team for three splits, like. <laughs> Eventually, there's a lot of ra- raise wage inflation, and the fact that they're doing so well, I'm guessing Cora One wasn't like getting paid maybe as much as like some of the other players who've signed the teams recently. So he was just trying to get a higher salary increase by seeing how much he could get and to see if he could force like EDG to pay him a little bit more. I doubt he was getting paid poorly, but um, just because EDG does have a reputation for paying well. But I just, I mean, that, that's my theory on what he was doing. He did end up staying with the team. He was confirmed on the roster announcement. Um, I'm guessing they'll stick with that Koro, Clear Love, Pond, Deft, and Mako lineup. Um, just because they also moved Ray and um, By Me to yeah. the main lineup. So. Which, the saddest thing about that is that I feel like By Me is going to see more play than Ray. Maybe. Because, well, of course, Cor- why would you replace Koro? Like, the other thing is, is like, if you're... Unless they all decide to swap out Deft for a Chinese AD carry, because they said they're going to announce two more players still. Mm-hmm. So unless they decide to swap out Deft for a Chinese AD carry, both their midlaners are Korean. <coughs> so you can't really swap out the mid lane and, like, have... You can't really d- change the number of Korean players to let Ray play easily. So... Mm-hmm sort of the situation they're in. That sucks. Nah. Yeah. Ray, like, Ray really needs to find... I'm sad that ADD, ADG wasn't, like, able to be, like, 
a good enough team, obviously. He tried so hard. <laughs> he tried so hard. He was trying to lug that team over his back. Oh it just my didn't work god. Out. Those Kale games, man. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time... You find these five. <laughs> At the same time, I don't really know how often EG would need to use any subs whatsoever. I think it's more yeah, yeah. of like an acquisition to prevent acquisition from other teams. It feels like to me, because they said they're going to sign two more players and it'll probably be an AD carry to support, it sounds to me like they're like just getting a full roster, two full rosters that they can like skirm against. Scrum, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... It also serves as insurance policy and then if, if, I mean, and if things go well with those other players, then there you go, an LSPL team they could potentially form, so... And then they had that like EDG International logo and the speculation is is that some of these players that they said that are like on the EDG lineup are actually on like the new LSPL team because they saw that LSPL spot which would be called EDG International when they announced the last two players, so... I have no idea what's happening exactly, but that's all the announcement said. Um, yeah. Invictus <coughs> Gaming confirmed their roster. <coughs> they didn't confirm their roster, they just posted a picture on their Weibo. Oh, they okay. didn't like list it and say, oh, that's like Invictus Gaming hype! And they had like one of the photos of the existing roster. And, uh, so it's, yeah. but I, my understanding is, is the IG roster is staying the same. And this so. is important because Zatai was actually considering retiring, but after seeing EDG success at MSI, rejuvenated him. Yeah, apparently he was like doing with Kid and yelling at Kid for picking this fortune. He's like, no, we're gonna be serious. <laughs> 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 Which from Zatai is pretty funny. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Any other, did we get all of them or did we miss someone? Um, we, did we talk about, <laughs> we didn't talk about WE. We talked about WE at length. We did. We talked about Ninja. Well, yeah, we didn't, that's not we didn't talk about, about WE. Dada. We didn't oh, talk about, okay, Dada 7. Yeah. We have Dada to talk seven. about the 777. Seven, seven. Um, oh yeah, of course. He needs to, he needs a brand he, change. He needed to change his identity, for sure. So there was <laughs> a rumor, point. there was a rumor from Xiao Xiao, which turns out to be probably completely false. Okay. Um, that Duke was gonna come to the top lane for WE, and that they were gonna have Spirit, um, Chia, and San and Dada 7. But, um... I don't think Santa's leaving OMG, and I don't think they're going to get Duke. And the picture they posted to their way about was the same roster, except they had Conan. You got trolled so. by Xiao Xiao? I got trolled by Xiao Xiao. I was like, still kind of like, that sounds like it would be cool to have like a really strong top laner with Spirit so that he could have an a ally, but just it was not to be. The picture, though, gets my hopes up that they'll be starting Conan, which I feel like that's a false hope. And it's weird to say that I hope they start Conan, but when your alternative is Dada 7, um, I mean, watch Dada 7 come out and just be like suddenly a god. Well, here's what's really That'll be the best day of my life. Is that How hard <laughs> is it to find a support in this environment? You have so many players out there, and their options are Conan and Dada. Come on, 300 guys. Let's go. <laughs> One day, so 300 this, this will be on an OPL like, team. Really curious to me is that out of all of the players, like A, out of all of the positions that you're going to change on the World Elite roster, you're like, okay, it's the support position. Because obviously we talked about how Yuge and Conan were both saying like, you know, I don't want to be on the team, you start on the team. I don't want to be on the team, you start. So then they go and they find Dada7. Now Dada7, if you don't remember who he is, he's OMG support. Played with San, um, the Fnatic versus OMG games at Worlds, where it was that crazy ending. Like I just, Dada Seven. He played Nami. He unfortunately that last fight happened when he wasn't in the fight. It was a four v five. Yeah, we're go going flashed over the wall. Yeah, where I was. Um, Dada Seven is not the most experienced player. I believe he actually is from Cross Title. Well, actually, he is experienced. He's just he not played good. an entire Wait, LPL split before. Yeah, for, no, for I just, that's, energy. that's my way of saying that he's maybe undesirable in his results, or at least he yeah. hasn't shown. I mean, because he's actually strong. been playing for a while now. But he's he's from a fighting game, I believe. It's like his like yeah. core title. Yeah, DFO, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he's not oh. like yeah. yeah. He's wow. yeah, he's a professional DNF Apparently... player. He played. He competed in World Cyber Games for it or something. And what the? Got oh, okay. banned from DNF for advertising a non-Tencent game. 
And I think Wait, the only really? reason he actually started playing yeah. League is because San asked or San asked him, right? Yes. Or somebody uh, well, asked him to play. That was the rumor is that someone asked him to play, but like he's really good friends with San. The thing is, is that he did switch titles, and he do isn't just playing because of San, because he's played an entire split on a team without San before. So, like, yeah. people who went on Reddit was like, China Talk, stop being mean to Dada7. He's only playing because San asked him to play. He doesn't actually want to play League. Why was he playing an entire split without San then? Stop! No more! The most tragic thing is we never got to see the Dada Uzi I lane. Ah. <laughs> uh. Either way, uh, this guy has got a really limited champion pool. You pretty much have to put him on like a tank, because otherwise he'll just die a ton because he's just he's not very experienced. In well, he'll just die anyway, but it does help. He misses a lot of his skill shots, so he halves a lot of his impact as far as CC and damage is concerned. Uh, just there's pretty much consistent problems throughout this guy's career. He's always been a sore spot or the easily like. He did have a good board a stats though at Worlds. <laughs> he did have a good. Yeah, yeah. He actually ended up. <laughs> More than any support, except for, <laughs> I think it was Yellowstar, yeah. um, yep. per minute, so that was, uh, which, like, those stats are slightly biased, because they had that really long game, right? With Fnatic? Where, like, if you have a Sidestone, and eventually your wards per minute's gonna be really high, so, like, the fact yep. that those two are at the top, it's a little bit suspicious, but, yeah. yeah. What's sad is, like, for people who don't know Dada, which I'm really surprised about, like, because you, you would have heard his name by now. He was literally at Worlds. But, like, it's one of those situations in which, like, you hear so much bad talking about his play, and, you like, I'm always at a moment where I want to defend him. Like, during his like during the split, I'm like, eh, he can't be that bad. And then you watch another game, and it just keeps, like, you, you just can't defend it anymore. It's just It just gets to that point. Like, he's actually, he's probably, I mean, he's played... I don't. I want to say he's probably improved by now, but that's just the general assumption you always want to make about a player. And it's just he seems to be a very go lucky, happy guy in all of his promo videos. So maybe he's just like super. Like if you have Yushe and, and Conan who are like, take me off the team. I'm done, coach. So like put me out. You maybe you need that guy who's like, yes, I'm ready to go. Let's go, guys. Let's win. S supposedly yeah. that's why Aluka like Aluka keeps getting on team assists because apparently Aluka's attitude is like super good. Like. He's just this happy guy all the time. Even and when he's getting his over by like 10 was... people, he's like, this is awesome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, that was like... so much fun, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Aluka and Dada7 have been on a team together before, though. And that team won pretty much, like, I think four games the entire split. So, just a warning. Um, no, maybe it was when Dada six. comes out to be a god, like his game change just levels him up, all of you will I know, regret. like, Aluka and Dada are suddenly gods, and people are like, oh my god, those China Talk people are idiots, it's like, who is- just starts feeding <laughs> relentlessly. Oh my god. <laughs> but Someone no. has to pay. It has to be equivalent exchange. Just... Spirit has to go down. For I mean, there's a possibility that Aluka and Dada are going to be like the carries WE needs, but the thing is, it's just the precedent has not been set for this. Okay, and Kelsey. that's all we want to say. See, Spirit, Shie, and Mystic, they're actually like really negative people. They're like, they, they're, they're sick, <laughs> they get tilted really easily, they, they constantly feed, and so their performance has only been at like 50% because it just it becomes like this gnome. Like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to team fight now. And it just it caused their fiery destruction, which is why they were the first team to drop out in playoffs. With Dada 7 and Aluka, if we just inject rainbows and unicorns and love into this team, it'll unlock Mystic, Shie, and Spirit's performance. And suddenly they'll be like, guys, I don't think we can win. And Dada 7 will be like, no, we've got this. And Spirit will be like, yes. No, Let's my favorite honest. is like, it's already rainbows. <laughs> no, Spirit, like, my favorite is that interview with Spirit and Mystic, where Spirit's like, the only team I don't think we'll be able to beat is EDG, and Mystic's like, eh, maybe we can get fourth, and Spirit's like, no, no, we're gonna be awesome. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, it's already working. This is the best team ever, and then they're like, how can we ruin this? How can we destroy Spirit one more once again? I know. It's Dada like Spirit will double your salary if you speak well of us in interviews. <laughs> All I'm saying is if you have Dada7 and Aluka, I'll just reach back into the vault and bring out S2IZ. <laughs> and suddenly, let's see if his attitude changes. So let's see, let's see if he's far behind. Yeah, well, this he's is actually contributing. You get ST see, Raz understands. S2IZ, really famous for tilt. Get him back on the roster. Surround him with love. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's like gonna be one in five, and Aluka and like Dada will just be hugging him, be like, "It's okay." <laughs> just so, get up from his seat, like just take their hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he dies all the time. He's like getting <laughs> up and going and hugging his teammates. It all makes sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. You know anyway, what? I hope he succeeds. I do too. I actually that would be like a really cool story, and as yeah, a writer, that would be the best storyline. Donna Seven, the true carry. Of exactly. World Kelsey Avengers. already has seventy-five percent of this like story written out. Just, oh, like, it's ready to go on the score. Like esports seven and the score, they've just been looking at each other like your Mako piece. Yeah. <laughs> Donna Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Donna Seven uh, rising. Mm. Do we want to talk about what we think of RNG and King rosters, though? Nope. Nope. Do we want I'm to? Switch around what I thought last, like. Because we haven't actually said what what the King roster. What, what it's the also R fairly is. important that King also replace their coaching staff. Um, because RNG is let me, I'm Alexi, Jiao uh, Wushin, and Lei. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean the team has talent now, but. I mean, they've I always. Been I actually think Shaohu and Assassin are very similar. It's just that Shaohu showed a lot more champions. And yeah. you did not just say that. Let me. Uh, and Shaohu is like will also take a lot more risks I think, than Assassin did, but because Assassin, yeah. like the entire, I think the good thing about this is because one of the big failings of King was that if they would just like passively lose sometime by not doing anything so someone like Xiaohu who's like ta a big risk taker could actually be really helpful um, and then let me I think is actually considering how many champion pool issues Sky was struggling with last split is actually gonna be an upgrade so I'm so sad about that. I mean I'm not I want to be sad about that because I really do love Sky as a player but he has a lot of issues that n don't involve Aurelia <laughs> like if it's if if he's on Aurelia, we're fine. But otherwise, it becomes a problem. Vici and RNG become the same team. Like, so where do we put RNG then? Like I said, I think RNG and Chowgo are gonna be like fighting over eighth and ninth. Okay, yeah. and King, you put above that. The yeah. The Starhorn Royal Club team. Mm -hmm. I want to preface this by saying that all King, I mean. All the old, st the, the old Starhorn Royal Club, the one that got relegated, all they needed was time to solidify any form of synergy with that roster. Like, they they had this whole issue where Name wasn't there, and when Name was there finally, hey, we had a team except, like, Insect fell off a building, and you're like, okay. <laughs> like, That's a bit extreme. I don't think he like, fell off a yeah. building. But. Okay, he fell. <laughs> I mean, it's a better story. Not, not only is that wrong, but he's but you're taking the blame away from Insect here, okay? This, this is his responsibility, all right? Okay. <laughs> okay, he jumped off of... <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> And so, like, then I they feel put in a so blank. bad for him. I'm actually okay. He I was the most fun out of him last episode. I'm really excited that Insect is actually not retiring because I heard that he was considering retiring. I was like, no, he can't retire. He needs to carry Name to Worlds. That's how that works. Mm. Mm. And so, yeah. to see Insect continue to play, I just want to see. I said it before, in which I made some <laughs> random stupid. I just want to see how they're gonna do. Like I don't really even care anymore if they bought tank and they're terrible in their last place. I don't care. I just want to see a split where this team plays together. I want to see how they do with all the hype and all the back and forth and all the whatever. I just want to see them play a split. That's all yeah. I want. I don't care. Whatever. She's she's you know she, she, she'll take what she's given. All, exactly. all I'm saying. When I when Starhorn Royal Cup got relegated, I said that watch Worlds, the next Worlds, we're gonna have for whatever reason Starhorn Royal Club versus some random Korean team. It's gonna happen. It's gonna have to, gonna have to be Never Give Up now, though. It's not gonna be. It's, it's all the brand. How amazing would that be if RNG makes it to Worlds <laughs> and they go to second? <laughs> Shout out to God. Uzi Eyes like sitting in third place because he just got knocked out by RNG and he's just like, so this is what this feels like? <laughs> How insane would the MLXG hype be at that point? Because MLXG, in my opinion, is already the most overrated player in LPL and now he's just like, He steals Rrr. all the fucking kills. He looks like Harry Potter. Harry Potter? Yeah, he does. He does. He looks I more mean... like Harry Potter than Imp looks like Harry Potter. 
I mean, it depends how much makeup they splashed on his face. Like, that was it really intense. Does. That was like Harry <laughs> Potter, like, and the Sorcerer's Stone. That's <laughs> what that was. <laughs> and imps like Deathly Hollows. But in MLXG's high point in his career was based on his jungle path. Never based on uh, that Vi as well. The high point of his career is when Vi is at the apex of her assault and battery. You just ult someone, that's about it. That's but, pretty like, much his career. <laughs> But it has never been based off of his mechanics, and if you ever had pr needed proof, you can watch his numerous, maybe Italy couple games? Italy games, uh, and you can uh, see okay. how experience he misses. It's, 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 it hurts. It hurts my eyes <laughs> watching that. It's just like every game, we're just banning Italy, so you can't play it. But Italy is out of my I don't care. You're not playing it. <laughs> He's very young, though, uh, so it, it kind of yeah. makes sense There's that he would make irrational choices so, as far as his yeah. champion pool is concerned. That's uh. the thing, though. This team is still so young. Like, they're all so young. Okay. I think the average age actually dropped by adding Shaohu, so... Is there any <laughs> roster change? So we've kind of gone through. Is there any roster change that you guys wanted to see happen that didn't happen? Like, if you could just have your dream roster change, just one, what is it? Who do you fix? Who do you take? Who do you move? Uh, Ganty's coach to OMG, please. It's not oh, gonna happen. Really good one. He's not gonna be on Starhorn. He's gonna be on Starhorn Raw Club. By the way, just a question. Chris is no longer part of the organization, right? Right. Old Quit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just had to check. Rest <laughs> in peace, Chris. No. Um. Damn, this is a really hard question. Come on, guys. I wrote, I wrote an article on this. I literally, and here's the thing that you guys don't see, is I put this in Skype chat for them, like, yesterday. So they had all, all right, night to think about this. And I, was I, that I really wrote, yesterday? Yeah. I wrote an entire article about it. You can read it on the score.com. The score okay. I mean, at this point, mm. I wish that they would take it. Uzi Eye and they would put him, like, if you just switched Uzi Eye and Vasili, I think both those teams would get infinitely better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Mata would be really good. I think Vasily would do excellent on OMG, and I think Uzi I would do fantastic on the hands of Dandy and Mata. Yeah, considering I still that don't see why you use Vasily now, like, uh, just, I just want to clarify, yeah, again. I'm just switching like, uh, Okay. Mm. I just want to see Vasily can just, like, just, if that, then again, Vasily and Sand can just be like, I mean, this is kind of like the theme of OMG anyway, they're just becoming like movie stars or whatever, that's what the big circle jerk is. And Sand <laughs> and Vasily can just be models for the organization, so it kind of works out. I just think Vasily and San are very similar in like their play style and what they're were really well known for. And I think Vasily, like, OMG, just... they just need to get a cook out of the kitchen, and that's Uzi I. Like, they already had a system that worked with Lovelingo going at cool. They need to go back to that, and they just need a guy who's self sufficient, will do his thing. If that's San, if it's Vasily, I think it'll work. Uzi I, he would do wonders with the greatest support system in the world. Dandy and Mata. That would be the team for him. I would also like a, an OMG situation where OMG got like a world class Korean support and then Leveling tried support again. I could also see like ECI because he is like a shot caller type, like arguing with Mata. <laughs> they don't speak the same language, you'd be fine. Mata would be like, whatever, take the lantern or don't take it. <laughs> take it or die. <laughs> God, I think the difficulty with this question comes with whenever I think, oh man, what's a really good player that I want to see on a roster? And it's like, it's always a Korean player. And I was like, well, what, where can I put him? And then. You realize every team just has two Koreans, and so I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, um, what team doesn't have two Koreans currently sitting in the roster? Uh, just the King and RNG. OMG. OMG just as well. RNG and OMG, oh, and yeah. okay. well, all the old King RNG. Yeah, yeah. it's Get very out. confusing. Since yeah. I did a 20 minute video on it, that helped a lot. So yeah. Yeah. I guess I would just like to see Ray on RNG. That would be amazing. That would be good. I'd be happy with that. That would be a good day's work right there. Raz is like, how can I out hipster everyone? I know. It's, like, <laughs> it's not even that hipster. <laughs> it's like... It would be uh, like really weird if you took like soda. Let's let's put soda on it. <laughs> that guy is really good. Stop is, trash talking soda. Okay, <laughs> Drexen. That would be a more hipster thing to say. Mm. Are you moving oh. Hatong to World Elite? <laughs> no. To complete the trifecta. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. The issue I'm having is the fucking two Korean limit. Um, Oops. Yeah. Because I, I really, I really want to move, like a Korean jungler to LGD really badly. All right. Aimee. But, Aimee is oh, really good. That's a good one. Yeah, that was my number four. 
He's not a very calculated player, but... <laughs> he has PYL to do the calculated stuff for Exactly. Him. Have you it's seen like, the pictures of PYL after his jaw surgery? I think that's actually like a shocked photo of coma. It, it occurs to me. It looks a little suspicious, but either way, yeah. PYL is getting jaw surgery. I'm yeah, really so curious to see what he looks like. That's something... So PYL actually might not play the first week. I'm not sure if that's... What, like, But he'll be there for sure the second week, but he might not play the first week because he's having plastic surgery to fix his underbite. Yeah. I love his little jaw and his See? braces, and he's got like the cutest facial expression. Same. Yeah. When he's yelling for a shock highlight. Uh huh. Like, it's gonna be missed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. That's actually, now that I think about it, avoidless, avoidless on LM. Uh, LMQ, this LGG. Guy. I love, I love avoidless, man. Yes. I really yes. love. Going for think. the L and L to LSPL player. No, Let's no, go. No. <laughs> I think XQ needs to come back to LPL. Yeah. Um, you can throw him on Vici or something, I don't know. <laughs> <That'd be good. laughs> Just throw him somewhere. <laughs> I think that would actually work out pretty well, to be honest. Like, yeah. I mean, he's already laned with a god support, so... He laned with the Chinese Mata, he may get the real thing this time. Exactly. There you go. Otherwise, no, I really just want a fucking god tier jungler in LGD, like, I really do. I mean, not, I mean, TVQ's gotten better. But, well, but, but again, the stupid Cinder Hulk meta, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you're I know, good exactly. It's like, first, you're dipper. it's like if your team gets ahead, you just win because you get Cinder Hulk first, and it's such a huge advantage, so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Did we have anything else? I don't have a list in front of me, and I can't look at it. Did I put anything else on the list? Hold on, I'll go check for you. Raz got to talk about his LSPL teams, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, showtime. Hey, Showtime's in. Well, oh, should yeah. we talk about the four teams Showtime. that actually went in there? Maybe, maybe. Uh, there was also the top rush changes that actually did happen. Like, Isn't, the like, the last team that qualified in the promotion not making it, so there are, like, 15 teams in LSPL this split, which I don't understand how that's going to work. I don't get it. It has to be purchased. I'm, like, it has to be, like, that slot. Yeah, um, I mean, why wouldn't they buy it? Unless it's just, like, too... Like, they said <laughs> they, they said they ran out of time to sell it. And no oh, one took really? it, wanted, and no one wanted it for the price that they were giving. So just give it for free, man. Yeah, this, that was really awkward, honestly. How it's about that roar so team? Weird. Free that LSPL roar? spot. All you gotta do Go. is buy it. Eh? Eh? No, well, I mean, I think the problem is is that the window closed and they can no longer sell Since it or when something. Since have windows or time frames meant anything to Chinese? They can okay. <laughs> they can do it, but they can only start playing in week nine. What? Wow. And then your jungler has to jump out of a second story window. And then everyone on Reddit will be like, it's his fault he was finally exposed for being weak. Oh my god. And then we've come full circle. Okay. This is good. And then Kayox will be sitting there and be like, I truly was the North American Name. The no oh my if I ever hear these words. He's so Chinese though. That joke had so many layers to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. We're good. It, the what second was... it was the it was the sequel. Oh, to we haven't second. talked about the promo video yet. Oh, oh. That's the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone should just link that in Twitch chat because it's it's just. Not if you guys haven't, haven't seen, seen it, it, we've been tweeting it about probably for the last two days. It's the new <laughs> LPL promo video, and it is to the Ninja Ninja Turtles theme song. The new one, like the Wiz, I don't know, yeah. rap crazy song. Yeah. All of last night I've been like spamming it for whatever reason <laughs> I have, and it's hilarious. Knock, knock, knock you about to get shell-shocked. <laughs> and it opens with like this badass of like clear love coming over the corner, or coming up the hill, and then it's got Spirit yeah. and he's got his hood, and then Vasily's like flipping a quarter or something. I have no idea what he's doing. He's <laughs> flipping a quarter between his forefinger and It's thumb. like some gangster pop. <laughs> it really is. It's like and the most it's thuggish the Ninja Turtles theme time. song. <laughs> Just yep. the best yep. part about it. Because the Chinese <laughs> do not care. They, they do, didn't even they edit do out. Do not like, care. They didn't even edit out the very like obvious Ninja Turtle references, like Shredder, like Turtle Shell, like obviously Shell Shock, I suppose. Like. They didn't give it. They didn't give a fuck. They're like, no, we're throwing this in there. It doesn't matter. And I like how Emma likes G's still wearing his king jacket. Yeah. 
whatever. And then well, it's yeah. like it's represented like the most popular representatives from the teams that were in playoffs last week. So, so the most popular players of the top eight teams. Yes. Confirm, Spirit is the most famous player in the world. <laughs> Spirit, yeah, people really love Spirit. I mean, what's it's not just a chill love? guy? Otherwise known as Sprite. Sprite. <laughs> right. My favorite player is Zero, so I'm happy that he didn't, you know... Disappear? Yeah. yeah. Okay, anything else? Do we have anything else that we want to talk about? Uh, I guess the only other thing that's kind of relevant is save going to an LSPL team. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, remember that guy who got to play mid lane for a game? <laughs> and two top lane games. Yeah, games, come on. Oh, this is, is going to be good for him. I think that team's going to be better off this like they they yeah, might Man, I think this LSPL like, this is gonna team be is so going I think well, that LSPL team will be better off with save on the team, but that's just like I mean, <laughs> 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 like I'm no expert or anything, but that sounds like a pretty good deal. I mean, they had fly and profit. They're ba they're they had Koreans anyways. I mean, save obviously. What? That's not the same thing, dude. I get I get I get. I get. The thing <laughs> is this the thing is that, like, Fly is another, like, serviceable, like, he's pretty skilled, but he's not gonna be a playmaker or hard carry, and then, like, 2S, I, I think, is actually okay, but, like, I don't know. And then, you have Illusion. Alright. Is Illusion. I love um, Illusion. What random fight will he start next? <laughs> you never know. But, and but they really needed, like, a carry playmaker, and I think, so this is, like, safe. Coming into his save this. Yeah. Yeah. Something I've noticed about these I teams. Save, is, I think save is the best player versus like bench duration ratio that's ever existed in League of Legends. <laughs> the greatest player sitting on the bench. We for the longest that time. Save. It used to be a statistic <laughs> well, for yeah, a... like bench per skill. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, we need like a graph that like goes diagonal. <laughs> Starhorn Royal Club is gonna have like Ganty's coach, I think Assassin and Tail. I don't know what the rest is gonna be. But... That's the true like sad thing about that big roster swap is that Tail lost a home. It's like it's Assassin like XQ le or losing his spot to Imp. Like you understand, you can see. I don't why understand it why no one thought Assassin was good. But poor little Tail, he deserved a good team. He deserved a home. Yeah. He Assassin, so I love. Much from LSPL, like, oh he, my god. Like he was great. The biggest thing I've always been frustrated about him, just the team as a whole, is that he just stopped roaming as much as he used to, and it was yeah. like, all right. But he was I like the hard though. carry on the games that they won. So. Yeah. Can I explain to you what was said to me when I got to meet Assassin? Have oh, I right. told you this story? You have not. Okay, so I got to meet King at G League, and they go, what did he say? How do you not tell me this? <laughs> I got to meet King at G League, and I also got to meet EDG at G League. I have I a picture of her with, like, the King roster, yeah. Because no one was talking to them. Like, G uh, EDG Seriously? came out onto the stage, and, like, all of the fangirls rushed them, and poor little King, they are like, okay, I guess we're just ejected second place. So they went in the stands, and they just sat on their cell phones. So, so I walked up to their coach, I was like, can I get oh a picture God. with them? And he's like, come here! And he got them all to line up. But as soon as he goes, he goes, hello, they call me Ass King. Very nice. What? Oh, I love that. So there you go. Nice guy. Took a picture with them. Kelsey has it. Yeah. Um, okay, see, I need to see that picture, I'm honest. It's pretty <laughs> excellent, because they all look super awkward, and then I look even more awkward, because I'm just, like, standing off to the side, because I'm like... <laughs> Okay, is that all? Did are we on to shoutouts? Oh yeah, I guess so. Okay, I have a really important announcement. Uh oh. Uh oh. And Drexen and Raz have no idea what I'm about to say, and it's so I can get their like full reaction. Um, this is my last China Talk episode. Ooh. Okay, I kind of saw that coming. Yeah, Drexen's like, yeah, I see this. So I will be replaced. China Talk will continue on without me, but my replacement is going to be League of Emily. And if you've never heard of League of Emily, you need to go follow her right now. She's a fantastic writer. She does a ton of stuff for Brazil is what she's really well known for. But she has fantastic historic knowledge about Korea, and she has really up-to-date and very um, researched opinions on China. She works for LOL Esports, she's a great writer, she does most of their Chinese pieces for them, um, but she's like a great flex, and I know that she'll fit perfectly in the China Talk lineup. You guys look so, like, you're depressed, you're like, no more for Oscar. And like, so here's sad. the thing. Well, it sucks, but no I kind of saw it coming, yeah. Yeah, I saw it coming. <laughs> 
it's one of those things that things, people, man. yeah, people will never. I don't know. If, I don't think people will never truly understand this. Frosk is the most. No, I won't th say the most. I said that about pun. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 man, this is already but, just really charming. I'm the best <laughs> mid laner in the world. She's the, the best mid laner in the world. <laughs> but she is you like, guys one of the most. This, but damn. <laughs> she's one of the most amazing people I've ever met. Like, honestly, like, initially hearing about her, like, I was a bit scared by her personality. <laughs> a little bit scared. A little bit. Because she's, like, a very outgoing person. Like, a very outgoing. And, she, like, you meet her, she's lovely. A, B, she's beautiful. C, she's smart. Like, it, this like, guy is, like, writing me, like, an obituary. <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, people, come on now. She's, like, like, I don't know. But she'll it's, no longer exist on the internet. Yeah, she's, I'm she's, she's never going to talk to you ever again, <laughs> She's done. <laughs> Once you're off of China Talk, you're done, Zoke. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, we know what happened to Hubo, right? <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. oh, wait, actually. Wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Any... Wait, you're gonna coach St. Vicious? <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving to coach St. Vicious. <laughs> In his <laughs> new <laughs> vocation, whatever that may be. That's right, he retired. Um, that was sad. Mm. Oh, right. <clears throat> okay. Tired. Any other shout outs? That was my big thing, is that so, League yeah. of Emily. Go follow Emily, it's at League of Emily on Twitter. She's great. She's, she's awesome. Yeah, she's going to be... She's not going to be the host. It's either going to be me or Raz host, probably. Mm. Um, and, but she... The reason we brought her on is because it's not... Like, she knows a lot more about Korea than I think... Well, yeah, I don't know. She loves Korea. Korea is, like, her home, and we don't really have, like, a career representative, and she started watching a lot of China recently, so I thought she'd be a good addition. So. And the two are, like, the same thing now, so it kind of works out. Yeah, exactly. And she's also just really smart, and she has, like, very specific and individual ways about how she looks at certain things. Like, I think her opinion is uh, a unique perspective and a very valuable perspective. Yeah, I we think... disagree on a lot of stuff, but she's really smart about it, so... Yeah. It'll add more diversity to our opinions as well. And, um... Yeah, so it'll be interesting, because the show will still be only 25% people who care about Korea, but we'll have 40% Koreans in LPL, so there's still a, a, an imbalance, obviously. No. I still care about Koreans. Okay. She, like, looks away. She's like, this fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Into the sunset. The I still care about you, Korea. <laughs> you didn't win MSI, but you're still number one in my heart. Um, okay. Drex and Raz, shoutouts? Oh, yeah. Also, a shout out for Frost. She does really cool graphics, so if you want to give her money, she'll do graphics and they'll be good. Yeah, if you and want then, to give me money. And, and then additionally... Your name is Kelsey or Draven. Do Raven. Draven, I was okay. like... Okay, Neelu comes to me, he's <laughs> like, no. I need a hawk. And I want this hawk to be on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and a vector to the side. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, and additionally, uh, I'm hiring content creators, so if you go to eSports careers, you can find ESH hiring people. That was like so, the worst promo I've ever if you seen. If right you stuff, guys want to work at eSports... for Mike, he's still like... Uh, it's kind of it's kind of like, it's kind of, it's like a, I don't know, it's, it's like the, the good with the bad, because it's like, all right, sweet. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring people in. I'm gonna like teach them how to write good, and then write and then good. I just I'm gonna the, teach yeah, them how to write good. That was intentional, okay? <laughs> it's, it's the irony, all right? But I've been getting really, really, really bad emails of people that like barely know any <laughs> like English. Zero it's kinda, yeah, it's really bad. So uh, yeah. I hope the people that have applied aren't watching the show. And if you are, I'm sorry. But <laughs> some of them are really fucking bad. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. And apparently, if you work for Esports Heaven, you can start fights with me on Twitter. That's always a, uh, a positive plus for working for Esports Heaven. You can. You can also just go to Daily Dot for a raise. That's always an option, too. The opportunities I present are endless, no, like, really. You know what's awesome? Like, we have historic <laughs> context. Kelsey started working for Drexen originally. Yeah. So I taste a little bit of salt. <laughs> this guy. He's he's a really uh, great person to work for though. Like legit the Gosu Gamers chat was one of my favorite chats ever. Like oh my yeah. gosh. That was such Except a for chat. a couple of people who know that or who they were. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is really for a good while enough. for a while it's like yeah, it was really good. So Okay. So he yeah. esports Evan. 
looking for jobs. Kelsey, do you have anything? Uh, I wrote an article about Mako that apparently Mike was going to write about an article about Mako. Um, so I was actually halfway done on the weekend, and then I went out on the weekend, and I'm like, well, this seems pretty safe. And I came back, and I was like, oh, it's published on the score now. Okay. It's on the score esports. You can still write it. It can be a competing Mako. Uh, dude, no. Especially since it's score yeah. policy not to self-post to Reddit, so you can go to... Good stuff. What the fuck was that, Rez? That's like butting heads, but I don't have two heads. <laughs> so. <laughs> He's, He's just, uh, just fist-bumping himself. <laughs> <laughs> He's all and like, I'll be coming out with a preview. Shock. You guys are the worst at shoutouts ever. Raz, what is your shoutout? I'm, I'm so out of it today, I'm just like, yeah, man. Yeah, Our, this is cool. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Shoutout to... to uh, play. Shout out to the Chiefs, Australian, OC, OC, OC. Uh, oi, oi, oi. Yeah, uh, OPL is coming up this. Uh, oh my God, OPL is <laughs> coming up. Man, I wonder what else is starting really soon. Let's talk about the OPL timeline. <laughs> LPL starting May twenty second. Thank you, Kelsey. And where can you find LPL in English? Twitch.tv forward slash Riot Games two. Thank you. Oh my god. And if you ever don't want to watch that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it's on a different time. It's on a different time. But if you're ever... It also, you're this is the LPL in obituary. By the way, this is how I... This is how I started watching OPL. If you ever, like... If you ever have a horrible, horrible sleeping schedule because of the LPL, you just... You find yourself, like, just awake at 3 a.m. in the morning. Like, what the hell happened to your life? Well, guess what? Your League of Legends is on... <laughs> At the same time, and That's it's Australians. It's also how you started right? we're watching LSVL, by the way. Uh, That's true. Okay, I, I think we're good. Are we good? <laughs> this is yeah, the good. longest Although, shout out session ever. I just want to know why Raz even started watching LSVL. Oh no, that's just a that's a story for another time. With the, with the same reason, honestly, which is just like I'm awake. You know what? What's going on here? Okay, guys, everyone, wave one final time. Bye bye.